Are body types real? Do ectomorphs really exist? And if they do exist, should we be eating and training according to that body type? A lot of experts will tell you no, and we'll talk about why that is. But maybe there's a benefit to learning a little bit more about being a naturally skinny ectomorph. Maybe. Let's dive into it. It's called being skinny. I haven't found any convincing evidence that your classification into one of these three somatotypes should influence the way you train or diet. Isn't it rooted in eugenics? Yeah, well, um, sometimes, yeah. yeah. He didn't necessarily I don't know him. much about it. I know it. somebody that, it, yeah, tied okay. it into that. But they don't exist. Body types are fucking bullshit. Ectomorph isn't the most precise word. You shouldn't be using it as a scientific term or anything like that. It's just that for a lot of us naturally skinny guys, it's easier to describe ourselves as ectomorphs than it is to talk about each factor individually. And when we do, people usually know what we mean. We have a thinner structure, we're naturally skinny, and we have trouble bulking up. The problem is, as soon as you call yourself an ectomorph, you're gonna get some people in the fitness industry scowling at you because you used a word with a bad reputation. It's like how if a woman says she wants to be toned. Everyone knows what she means. She wants to build some muscle and lose some fat so that she can have better muscle definition. The problem is, it's the word with a bad reputation and as soon as she says it, she's gonna get some people raging at her because she used the wrong term. And that brings us to a question. Why does the fitness industry hate the body type so much? Oh, I'm an ectomorph, I'm an endomorph, I'm a mesomorph. Oh. To me, this is a childish way of approaching the betterment of the body. Somatotyping has a history rich in pseudoscience. The first complaint is that the body types are rooted in bad science, and that's true. Back in the 1940s, a psychologist named William Herbert Sheldon came up with this system by sorting the bodies of 4,000 different Ivy League college students into three different categories. The endomorph is named for the endoderm, which develops into the digestive system. This is the body type that allegedly tends to eat more. They're naturally chubbier, shorter, and have a harder time losing weight. The mesomorph is named for the mesoderm, the muscles, heart, and blood vessels. This is the body type with thicker bones and broader shoulders. They're supposed to have an easier time building muscle. The ectomorph is named for the ectoderm, which develops into the skin and nervous system. This is the skinny, fidgety body type with a taller, narrower build and thinner bones. The fidgety part is kind of interesting too, because one of the things that can make it hard for a skinny guy to gain weight is when he eats in a calorie surplus, he starts to fidget more, burning off those extra calories. Much later, this was coined non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, and it's one of the defining characteristics of a so-called hard gainer. Now, people obviously have traits in varying degrees and in different combinations. What you're supposed to do is score yourself from one to seven in each of the three categories. So if you're somebody with very thin bones who's naturally skinny, but who also has a tendency to store fat and who isn't very tall, you'd call yourself a mix of an ectomorph and an endomorph. You're not supposed to take it that seriously, and I wouldn't recommend giving yourself a score or anything like that, but the system does account for people who are more than one body type. In fact, that's the norm. Being an extreme version of a body type is quite rare. With that said, some people do identify as being just one body type. I consider myself more of an ectomorph. I'm 6'2", I have very thin bones, and I have a very narrow build, a small stomach, a meager appetite, and a lot of difficulty gaining weight. That lines up perfectly with what an ectomorph is supposed to be. Here's the problem though. William Sheldon was a psychologist. He wasn't just sorting people into different body types. He was trying to line up those body types with personality types. So, endomorphs are friendly and lazy. Mesomorphs are extroverted and they like adventure. Ectomorphs are introverted and shy. And in my case, that's actually somewhat accurate. I'm introverted and shy. But that's just a total coincidence. Sheldon's hypothesis was wrong. He couldn't establish a link between body type and personality type. Here's the thing though, nowadays nobody's using the body types to try to link them to personality types. When somebody calls themselves an ectomorph, they're not calling themselves introverted and shy, and they're not linking that to their body type. They're just saying that they're taller, they have a thinner bone structure, and they have more trouble gaining weight. And that's fine. It, it, it's been widely debunked because most people don't fit neatly into any of those categories. Most people are a combination of a lot of those things. Okay, so Really, there's a continuum because it's not like you're either one side or the other. Most people are somewhere in between. The second complaint is that the somatotype system sorts people into three distinct body types. 
whereas in reality people are a mix, it's a spectrum. This complaint doesn't make sense because you're supposed to score yourself from 1 to 7 in each category, allowing you to have varying degrees and combinations of the different body types. Not that you should give yourself a score in each of the three categories or take the body types that seriously, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's just that this seems like a straw man argument designed to make the body types seem even more ridiculous than they already do. It implies that you can't change your body. I'll put a picture right here, guys, of when I used to be fat. Where the hell are skinny fat people? That's a real thing, guys. That's a real thing. And they just totally forgot about it. I look skinny to you? I'm a mesomorph now. Ta-da! Transformation. The third complaint is that our body type changes when we get into or fall out of shape. It's this idea that we all become mesomorphs if we can just build enough muscle or lose enough fat. Or, on the flip side, if we get totally out of shape, becoming skinny fat, then we just prove the system. This idea doesn't really hold up either. The body types are less about muscle and fat, more about our bone structure, our muscle building potential, and our fat storage tendencies. Let's start with our genetic muscle building potential. The broader your frame is and the thicker your bones and joints are, the more muscle you'll tend to start with, the easier it can be to build muscle, and the bigger you can ultimately become. You have thick wrists, thick ankles, knees, and large shoulders. That's a frame where you can pack on muscle. Clearly, there are some people who can build muscle so much more easily than others. Your bone structure can actually determine your muscularity to some extent. Now, it isn't any sort of huge disadvantage to be an ectomorph. We can still build plenty of muscle, we can still look cool, we can still get into great shape. It's just that we won't ever be as big or as bulky as a mesomorph might be able to get. There's a genetic component to fat storage too. Some people have more fat cells, bigger stomachs, bigger appetites, and when they overeat, they have thrifty metabolisms that store more of that extra energy as body fat. There's some people who can lose fat much more easily than others. Their metabolism is, is really, really adaptable. They start eating more food, they start burning fat like crazy, they get super, super hot at night, they can't sleep, they get like a ton of energy and move around. Naturally, skinny guys tend to be pretty lucky with that. We have smaller stomachs, smaller appetites, less of a tendency to overeat. And even when we do overeat, we have spendthrift metabolisms that rev up and burn up some of those extra calories. Sometimes. Now, different people are different and given enough time, a lot of skinny guys, if they aren't eating well and if they aren't exercising, will eventually start to accumulate fat around their midsection, becoming skinny fat. That doesn't mean their body type is changing, it just means that they're out of shape. In my case, even though I succeeded at building some muscle, I'm still tall, I still have thin bones, and I still have a tendency to undereat. It can help to have a word for that. Ectomorph. This ideology that you have to train or eat based on your body type is false, okay? If you're Googling what type of body type I am or how should I eat for my body type, cut that shit out. The fourth and final objection is that even if body types do exist, they don't determine how we should eat or train to get into better shape. What usually happens is something like this. You get someone who's overweight, they call themselves an endomorph, and they're having a hard time getting into a calorie deficit so that they can lose weight. Then you have another person, a skinny person, who calls himself an ectomorph, and they're trying to bulk up, but they're having a hard time getting into a calorie surplus to gain weight. Now, should these two people be eating the same diet? Of course not. They should be eating diets that align with their struggles and their goals. Now, a lot of the basics are the same. Everyone should be eating enough protein. They should be eating nutritious foods, getting plenty of fiber, making sure they aren't overdoing it with the sugar and saturated fat. A lot of the basics of eating a good diet are the same regardless of what your body type is. There's a difference too though. The skinny person is struggling with undereating and they need to find a way to eat more. The overweight person is struggling with overeating and they need to find a way to eat less. There are different strategies for these two opposite goals. The overweight person might benefit from eating a lower calorie, higher volume diet. They might benefit from chewing more of their calories instead of drinking them. Now let's consider the skinny person, the ectomorph. We're trying to fit more calories into a smaller stomach, so it makes sense to focus on dense foods. Dried fruit, nuts, trail mix, olive oil. These are all nutritious foods that make it that much easier to gain weight. The same is true with liquid calories. We can drink milk, soy milk, shakes, smoothies. Again, it makes it that much easier to get into a calorie surplus. And the same is true with a lot of these popular diets. Instead of doing keto, where you cut back on carbs, we can be adding extra rice and extra bananas into our diets. With paleo, instead of restricting certain foods, we can open our diet up, including more foods. Instead of intermittent fasting, where we're avoiding breakfast or skipping other meals, we can be eating extra meals and extra snacks. That way it's easier to keep up with our calorie intake. So I'd argue that eating according to your body type does actually make quite a lot of sense. It'll make it that much easier to achieve your goals. Training for your body type gets a little bit more complicated. 
I've had a lot of guys asking us if they should be lifting in lower rep ranges, doing shorter workouts, or shooting cardio because they're worried about burning too many calories. I wouldn't worry about that. Even if the extra exercise burns slightly more calories, it won't impede your muscle growth. All you'll need to do is eat slightly more food to make up for it. Now, I know eating slightly more food can be hard, but it's just a little bit more food and the extra muscle growth and health benefits will be worth it. A better approach is to orient your training around your goal. If you want to get bigger, focus on hypertrophy training. Focus on getting stronger in a moderate rep range at a variety of different lifts that bulk up the muscles you're most eager to grow. Don't focus on training like an ectomorph, just focus on training for muscle growth. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. A lot of ectomorphs have long arms, long spines, shallow rib cages, and narrow shoulders. Those aren't exactly powerlifting proportions. And that's fine. The powerlifting lifts aren't designed for hypertrophy anyway. All it means is that we should be picking lifts that suit our bodies. For example, if you're like me, with long arms and a shallow rib cage, it'd be hard to get good leverage at the bottom of a barbell bench press, at least at first. Even the dumbbell bench press can be hard when the dumbbells are teetering so far away from your body. And that's okay too. You can start with push-ups. They're great for building all of the same muscles as the bench press. Plus, as you get stronger at push-ups, the other variations will get much easier. The reason why this is so complicated though is that even two naturally skinny guys can be suited to slightly different exercise variations. And that can change as they gain muscle and strength and experience. So the best approach is to start with a good default program and then listen to your body and adapt as you go. And then there are the body type specific supplements or the supplement. I can only think of one supplement that is affected by your body type and that's a weight gainer. Overweight people are trying to eat fewer calories so they don't need a weight gainer. Underweight people who are trying to eat more calories or skinny guys, ectomorphs, they might benefit from something like that. Now, you don't need to buy a weight gainer from the store. You could blend up some oats, frozen berries, yogurt, maybe some milk, throw a banana in there, and you've got yourself a homemade weight gainer that's quite a bit more nutritious than what you get in the store. But still, you could kind of make an argument that that's a supplement that does depend on your body type, right? I'm defending the word ectomorph because 10 years ago, back when I was skinny, I found it really, really hard to bulk up and gain weight. A lot of the information online was targeted at a more general audience. The same is true now. The most popular diets are the carnivore diet, the keto diet, intermittent fasting, and these are all diets that make it harder to bulk up. When I would follow that kind of advice, I would lose weight and I wouldn't know why. I would go to my doctor and she would tell me that I was underweight and that I should try to gain weight. I would ask her how and she would give me dietary advice, again, targeted at the average person. I would lose weight, I would get frustrated, and I would give up. And then I stumbled upon the word ectomorph. And some of the advice online was pretty bad, there's a lot of bullshit out there, but it also connected me with a community of other skinny guys who are sharing tips and resources for people who are trying to gain weight. By implementing some of those strategies, I was able to gain 55 pounds in a little over two years. And that's when I finally started liking how I looked, I got a lot stronger, all my health markers improved. It made a really positive change in my life. And that's why I have a soft spot for the word. Or maybe that's just me. What do you think? <laughs>